Hi everyone, I'm Ms. Abidio and I'm one of the chemistry teachers here at NHS and I just wanted to take this time to introduce you to some of the most common lab equipment that you'll be using on a sometimes daily basis. It's really important to make sure that you know the difference between each type of glassware because they all have different uses and purposes. And when it comes to following a procedure, you really want to make sure you're following it, correct, following it correctly. And that includes making sure you're using the proper glassware. So let's get started by talking about this one here. This is called a graduated cylinder. Cylinder because it has that cylindrical shape and graduated because it has these little markings, as you can see, that tell us how much liquid is actually inside here. So a graduated cylinder is used for measuring liquid. So anytime you're asked to measure out 100 milliliters of water or 10 milliliters of acetic acid, anytime we're measuring the volume of a liquid, you will use a graduated cylinder. Okay, so, oh geez, that could have been really bad. But thankfully, I have this bumper on my graduated cylinder. This bumper, we wanna make sure it's up at the top because it protects our graduated cylinders from accidents. So if we happen to accidentally knock them over, it won't shatter and break everywhere. A common misconception about these is that we use them to kind of keep track of the amount of liquid inside the graduated cylinder, but that's what those graduated lines are for. This is for protecting our glassware from breaking if we happen to knock it over. But again, we want to make sure that we're just spatially aware in the lab and we're not just knocking things over with our elbows and we're putting things down gently just to avoid accidents at all times. Now our graduated cylinders do come in multiple sizes just for convenience of measuring liquid. So we have a 100 milliliter graduated cylinder, a 50 milliliter graduated cylinder, and a 10 milliliter graduated cylinder that you can choose from. And depending on the amount of liquid you're measuring, you would choose the one that best suits your needs. So if I'm going to be measuring out five milliliters of water, I'm probably not gonna use my 100 milliliter graduated cylinder. I'd probably use something smaller, like my 10 milliliter one. Or if I need to measure out 50 milliliters, I'm not gonna use the 10 milliliter one and measure things out 50 times. I would just use my bigger one. So depending on the amount of liquid that you need, that's gonna determine which graduated cylinder is best for you to use. Now, one thing you wanna make sure when you're measuring in a graduated cylinder is that you measure to the bottom of the meniscus. I think that's a term you guys have heard in middle school and maybe even in physics last year because liquid has the um, tendency to stick to the sides of the container that it's in, so it's gonna form a little curve and you wanna make sure you're measuring to the bottom of that meniscus to get an accurate measurement um, of, your, of your liquid. So that's how we measure liquids. The next two pieces of glass where I wanna show you are where we hold our liquids. So first I'm gonna show you guys the beaker. Now I do not wanna see you guys measuring volume in a beaker. It's a lot less accurate when it comes to measuring volume because it doesn't have as many uh, graduated markings to tell us how much liquid is actually inside our beaker. So we actually just use our beakers more for holding liquids. So once we've measured out our volume in our graduated cylinder, we would just pour it into our beaker and use it to hold the, hold the liquid inside there. Sometimes we would heat it up over the Bunsen burner. Sometimes we'd add different types of liquids into it, mix them together to see what happens. Um, but beakers are for holding liquids. Um, and again, we have multiple size beakers. We have little tiny ones that are 50 milliliters, and then we have really big ones that can actually hold up to a liter of volume. So depending upon how much liquid you need to hold inside that beaker, that's gonna determine which beaker to use. And then the last piece of common glassware that you'll be seeing uh, in the lab is called an Erlenmeyer flask. And it's very similar to a beaker, except notice how it kind of curves in towards the top. It has a little kind of like stubby neck that we can hold on to. We also use Erlenmeyer flasks for holding liquids. We do not use them for measuring. Again, graduated cylinders, those are the only things we measure liquids with. Um, we would hold store liquids in here. We also mix liquids together by holding onto the neck and kind of swirling around. And because the neck is angled like that, it's gonna prevent the liquid from splashing out as we mix it together. Um, and that is our most common glassware that you'll be seeing in our, in our labs, so. Make sure you keep track of which one's which and use them accordingly.